keeping Chris Bumstead in the game. Title of this video, guys. This is a response video to Chris Williamson's video he just put out interviewing Seabum on the drug so toxic that Mr. Olympia Chris Bumstead refuses to take. All right. So this is going to be so important for me to get directly out to Seabum, to Chris Bumstead, because he has a condition that I've researched significantly, and he's been honest and open about that, and we're going to go into that today. And I'm going to make some informational recommendations uh, for him with his doctors, and I would love to do an interview with you, Chris. I'd love to try to see if I could help you, brother, and do a consultation with you. Of course, um, we'd, we'd have to do an interview and talk about this to the world, because we need to share everything with the world is, you are so awesome, Chris. And here's my personal feelings and my admiration for Chris is, it's unreal what this guy's been through, and you're gonna see by the end of this video what I mean. So in 2018, he was getting ready for the classic physique, Mr. Olympia, and he ended up, he was in LA apparently, doing some uh, his his stuff, you know, um, touring and just going to do his talks and stuff. And he, he crashed and burned, you know, um, into the ER. He was in there for, I think he said five days and he was diagnosed with IgA nephropathy. We're going to go into this today. And this is something you will have to live with the rest of your life. I watched the video after he took second place at the 2018 Mr. Olympia classic physique. And I'm not a bodybuilder. I watched the video for, in preparation for this because I've just never seen that video before. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have though. And you want to fall in love with the guy. He's an absolute sweetheart. He cried the whole time. <laughs> he cried the whole time during the video. Certainly not a fake guy. The feelings are overwhelming. It's amazing. I don't know if he's crying from the estrogen, <laughs> from the drugs and the test, or from the prednisone <laughs> that he's on. But he, he's, this guy is reason why, not only genetically, and he knows it, and he's mentioned, I have great genes. I mean, he does. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. I just want to keep the guy in the game, but I don't want to give support from steroids. The world's opening up. And Chris, brother, you are so important to the world because of your openness and Kudos to Chris Williamson for doing a great video. I'm loving the media myself now more and more and just the way it was shot. So here we go. Let's get into it because I have some information for Chris and for the world about his medical disease and how I think I, if I was one of his doctors, would attack this. So let's, let's, let's get right into this right now. I know that you're quite health conscious about bodybuilding. Yeah. But obviously it's a very rough sport physically, psychologically, hormonally. Do you have any concerns about longevity? You know, you've done an awful lot of like yeah. extreme things to your body over the last decade. Mm -hmm. How worried are you about that longer term? I mean, I think if you're a bodybuilder, you don't worry about that. You're either stupid or lying, to be completely honest. So it's something I definitely, obviously, with all my own health conditions from the past, is on the forefront of my brain. But I just manage it as best as I can. You know, there's blood work you can get done consistently to keep your markers on. There's a lot of tests. Now, let's talk about it. So he goes right into his medical condition that he had in the past. And that's what I'm talking about from 2018. Okay, here we go, guys. Thinking caps on. He has a condition called IgA nephropathy and Berger's disease, and it there's no cure for it. It's going to be a chronic condition for him. It's a, it's a common form of something called glomerular nephritis, and it's an autoimmune condition. Okay, and he's talked about that. And there are going to be flares where he presented in a flare of 2018. He was in the hospital for, for days, you know, and he talked about the edema in his lower legs and that he was so scared. And again, the guy got through it and is, I've always been wondering, like he, he's, he took second place in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, this guy's won first place. I'm always like, this guy's got kidney disease and he's getting around it, how is he doing it? I studied this for you guys, and of course for you, Chris, because you're so freaking awesome, brother. So the 
autoimmune condition of IJ and Throthby's mediating through two main single pathways, singling pathways, endothelin 1 and angiotensin 2. These processes, these when the autoimmune condition that this is, with the IgA complexes get stuck and hung up in the mesangial complex of the glomerulus. That's the functional unit of, that's the nephron. That's how it causes the disease. It increases inflammation. And this is a, this is a, this negative feedback loop where you, you get this accumulation in the, your kidney mesangium where the functional unit of the nephr nephron, the podocytes and all this. Nef nephrology is so complicated, guys. I mean, I'm an internist. These, I have so much respect for nephrology doctors. Your kidneys. So when you look at the disease, it's proteinuria, it's protein. So you start dumping blood actually and protein. And I know Chris knows this and he hasn't, I don't know if he's got into it, but this is, the, this, is this vicious cycle that we have to discuss and with inflammation and, and it leads in the end to end stage kidney disease. I've seen several patients that are not on steroids. I'm a primary care doctor in the past for about 15 years in Connecticut. I've had patients that not on steroids that have this. And I know the exact way the doctors attack it, but now we have new meds I'm gonna go into today. Uh, but let, let's, let's hear more about what Chris is talking about here. You know, diagnostics now are absolutely insane. And if you want to stay healthy long term, it's getting something. If something's going on with you, catching it early. So I do a lot of diagnostics and blood work and make sure I'm getting healthy. And ever since I was sick in 2018, my blood work's kind of continuously improved. Mm. So I know there's no like negative impact I'm putting on myself. Like I've reduced a lot of the stress and negative things I put in my body and increased more of my health. Like the type of food I give in me is. Now, how has he done that? How has he done that? I'm going to hypothesize things when we go into this in a minute. But since 2018, being he had a, he had a flare before, by the way, he had a, his initial flare years before 2018, and he was in the hospital. And they didn't do a biopsy. They didn't know it was IgA nephropathy. He talked about it. I've seen multiple. I've done my study, my research for this one, and so since this time. He, he's been stable and he's talking about the necessity of doing your blood work and knowing what you have early and then working around it. And that's why I made the anabolic doc app.com for you guys. This is super complex. And again, this is quite rare, but it's, it's the co most common form of this type of kidney disease for this kind of person. But you have everything, guys. And that's why I love what Chris is doing here. So let's listen on because I'm going to go into more of the medicines, my ABCDs in a minute. It's not just calories. It's actually the, the, the quality of the food and the type of food and everything that I need that like, I really focus on rather than just straight macros. I've never been a macro guy, and I'm even less now because I actually care about my health. And all these aspects, like everything I know I need with my body come from a lot of the diagnostics I've done and vitamins and all this stuff. And I just know that I've made an agreement with myself that when these things start to falter and they start to go down, no matter where I'm at in my career, if I'm peaked, if I'm not peaked, if I'm about to be better, I just need to call it. Listen to that, guys. This guy is living on this edge. He's a pro bodybuilder. It's super dangerous. There's a lot of drugs involved. Forget the hate and the bullshit. This is harm reduction. I've been in this game for a long time. He just said that and I hope it's true. I hope it's true that he said that when he sees things going south, he's going to call it. This is the edge of life, guys, of being on PEDS. And if you understand the complications and every man, if you do steroids, young guys, you're not going to have any of this. This is not from steroids. This is genetic. Now on steroids to minimize the disease and the progression. That's why I'm here in this world. So this is just, he has great luck for his genes and who he is, and he has bad luck because he has goddamn IGA nephropathy. So he's gonna call it. Guys, if you start steroids young, you're, number one, you're gonna get shut down and you're gonna be on testosterone forever. He's gonna be on testosterone forever. And testosterone itself with regular physiologic doses is not, is not nephro, toxic absolutely not 
But we all know he's doing more of that. But let's go see what he's not doing, what drug he won't take. I really? just, I, I know that it's not worth it to me. You know, there, there's a life after bodybuilding, for sure. Who I am is not a bodybuilder. There's more to me than that. I'll be happy without it. And there's no point in like, that beautiful as this moment in my life is, it's already been a great time. But if I'm going to sacrifice my future life, hopefully with a family and my children of my own, and I'm going to be sick or unable to enjoy it with them. That's the biggest thing I would regret. So I just, I'm saying on top of knowing where I'm at. And if it goes down, I'm just going to have to call it quits. Yeah. I've heard you say that in the past there was uh, compounds and things that you would have taken that now you're like, this is too, yeah. it's too dangerous. What are the things that for you are like off the table with regards to this is too much? This is too risky for me. The biggest one is like trend. Yeah. The good old trend that like there's guys who literally like base their social media off that now. It's just like a meme of the internet, of the gym culture. And I don't even think people realize the impact that these jokes and memes have on like people coming up who would just see you constantly joking and talking about saying you need more of it to like be better and feel stronger and all this shit. But that's probably the most toxic thing you can put in your body. And I've done it in the past, but I don't anymore. I just haven't touched it in like five years. Why? just the toxicity it causes in your body like the, it just comes in it harms your kidneys your liver just everything that takes your body to process it and go through it it's just not natural it's not meant to be in your body and it makes you strong as fuck and people f say they feel like they're on top of the world when they take it but to me that's not really worth the health risk anymore and another reason why i love classic physique is because i hit a weight cap and i was close to my weight cap like three years ago not at it but i could have taken more shit and really tapped out and been at the point where I couldn't put on any more weight or I could actually take less shit and force myself to work harder, be more consistent with my diet and my training and my recovery and then still get that result. But it would just be a little bit more effort. All right, guys, that's it. So Trent, look at Chris Bumstead. He's taken Trent in the past. He's a top, probably the number one top overall bodybuilder walking the earth today. I think that's true, right, guys? He's not, a, he not, he's not in the men's open. He's in the, the lower class, which is hopefully the more healthier class theoretically, but we know it certainly cannot be because they're all doing steroids and there's just so much going on. But so he's he's not going to do trend. Now, a lot of guys are going to call him out for that and say he's full of shit. But guys, trend is super toxic. Do we know how toxic it is versus other steroids, not to mention when you use other steroids at high doses, when you could hurt the kidney, especially with FSGS, that's focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, which is the most common type of uh, renal kidney disease from steroids, not this. He just has this and it can, it's going to get worse just potentially. And what is he doing to make it worse? That's why I'm doing the video. But the FSGS is the common one that I see so often because guys are not checking their urine for protein and proteinuria and not taking the precautions, including keeping the drugs to a down low. So that was the special drug. That was the secret drug that he didn't want to do. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I'm going to go into a, a, a breakdown now here uh, for him, for being honest with us. And really, you know, he's taking drugs we know he is. And let me go into my spiel now and what I think he should do. A, B, C, D, hemoglobin A1C. Guy's probably not diabetic or pre-diabetic, so he doesn't have to think about that. B is blood pressure. Number one, he has to be careful when he's on cycle, when he's big and bulky, the protein, he talks about the protein. Boy, I'd love to see what the top nephrologist in the world would say about how does a pro bodybuilder take protein to get to maintain his muscle mass, but not be toxic. Because Chris, what is your proteinuria? It's all gonna be about the proteinuria with this disease. Next, toxic things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. There's no way he takes these. Even with a training pain, he knows this, I guarantee it. He knows that. Next, toxic levels of steroids that, that, that he trend, but he's on other steroids. We know he is. now. Diuretics, I hope this guy's not using diuretics. Now, let's talk about medical diuretics and Lasix that he's used because the doctors gave it to him and he used it and he said he doubled up for the 2018 show. Guys, I saw the video, he said it himself. So when you, diuretics are taking the water off because when your kidneys are in a flare with this condition or any nephropathy, 
if your, your filtration rate is slowed and you're going to get puffy, your ankle edema, you're going to get sick, you're going to feel like shit, not to mention you can go into problems with, with managing your potassium and that's how people die. Okay, and you're in the ER. So this is super complex with electrolytes and sudden cardiac death, not to mention the heart, but he's young. So if, you, if he's going to use diuretics, which we know the pro bodybuilders use all this stuff and clenbuterol and growth and all this, that it's, God, it's such gambling. It's gambling with, the, with, the, with bringing out a flare. Again, the diuretics guys, they're, not, they're used to get the water off. The corticosteroids and other medications are used to push down his immune response. This is, and he's, he was on prednisone, but you can't. If this guy competed on, if you take prednisone, you get full water. Prednisone is a catabolic drug. It reduces muscle. It causes water in, infiltration. It causes you to be puffy and bloated. This guy took second place, and he was on prednisone and some other meds, obviously, drugs and some diuretics. Unbelievable unbelievable and now subsequently years later and now Chris are you coming for for what round five in 2023 I'll be up in the Olympia this year guys got to come by the booth okay ABCDs the B is his proteinuria he uses corticosteroids for flares he gets on off them obviously next is going to be he's on an ACE or A or B like a patelmosartan that I love, you look at the Anabolic Doc app, he's on it for hypertension and limit proteinuria. That's old school stuff. Next, here's the modern medicine. There's a drug called Filspari. It lowers the proteinuria in the urine. It blocks the endothelium and the angiotensin 2. Guys, this is real medical technology. I'm here. I love chemistry and medical technology. I'm an internal medicine doctor. Don't try this at home. The next is, see, his proteinuria for this condition is going to drive the disease. You see? So the people are on this. But I, I read about this medicine in detail. It's potentially hepatotoxic. And of course, it can cause birth defects in women, but he's not a woman. So th this is something where, can he take this drug and is he on it? Absolutely. This is an amazing drug, but it's, it's a new drug. I'm not a nephrologist. I'd love to hear what nephrology guys say. And he's on ACE and ARB, probably ARB. I guarantee he's on it. He's got to be careful with his blood pressure and the other drugs, everything I mentioned. Now, he, with this, but could he take this, not to mention with statins and so on and so forth, when you look at the toxicities, not on the kidney, but the liver, the answer is no. You have to be so careful. Next, there's another drug called uh, Tarpeo, and that's bud uh, budenicide tablets. That's oral, oral cortical steroids like prednisone. But again, it lowers the protein. This, the mechanism of action to sustain these people that have IJ nephropathy, so they don't go into end-stage renal disease, is slowing the progression of the, of the condition itself, underlying the autoimmune that leads to the proteinuria. Boom. Whew, that's B. So B is blood pressure for so many of us. We, which it staves off understanding perfect blood pressure with or without medicines for endothelial disease of the cardiac and the kidney. That's all I care about, guys. This is really what I'm good for. C is cholesterol. Does he have bad lipids? Does he, has he had a calcium score? Definitely, Chris, do not do a CT angio because that's with renal contrast dye. You can destroy your kidneys. A coronary artery calcium score is without a contrast dye. It's just it is a little bit of radiation equal to a mammogram. That would be brilliant to see if he has any a a aspect of early atherosclerosis. That's C, and you could use other medications with diet and exercise to really keep down the, the next stage in his life when he's home and he's kicking ass and he's retired and he's killing it with his brands that his heart and his kidneys are going to be protected. This is my world. Next last is D. D is deposition disease. He's a man on androgens. You know the red blood cells, guys, apart from everything else with the kidney and the liver. Really has nothing to do with that. The red blood cells go up. And then there's iron deposition. When you look at a CBC, you can't just look at the CBC and the hematocrit and hemoglobin and just don't let some fool tell you to phlebotomize to get down to some 15 or 16 hemoglobin. You need to just look and understand this yourself. That's why I made the app to understand the integration of the iron studies and the ferritin. You have to look at the potential deposition outside of 
the increase in the concentration of the red blood cells that can be dangerous for venous thromboembolisms and, 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 and acute death and pulmonary embolisms. Guys, the A, B, C, Ds will never steer you wrong. And I'm going to conclude on this. Chris, I'd love again to do a consultation with your brother and just help heal the world together, at least for one great video, maybe more, because we've come to the point of openness and I believe goodness and karma because everyone's using effing steroids and it is what it is. I just want the world to understand the consequences. There it is, gentlemen. Let's get your comments. Thank you so much for staying with me on this one. This one was cool. This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam, where I bring you through digitally all the important medical issues that you need to understand one by one. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. They're group meetings where men come from all over the world to ask questions, and I answer the question, everyone listens and learns. Number three, discounted commercial labs. The actual lab panels that I order for my patients, discounted only through the app, you have access to these labs all over America. Number four, weekly member only uncensored videos. This is really cool content that I can't make on YouTube or Instagram because a lot of circumstances, I'm talking about protective medications like blood pressure, cardiac medications, and I can't mention brand names. Here, I mention everything fully uncensored so you know exactly what to do. Number five, Anabolic Docs mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't want to come to the meetings, you ask a question, I'm going to respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question by me as a video. Lastly, diagnostic and management library that is easily searchable by keywords. I've put all this together for you guys for $19.99 per month. Come to one man-to-man -man meeting, let me answer your question. Look at the videos, do a mailbag, order some labs for super cheap, really get into your health. Guys, I've done this for you to scale what I'm doing for men to protect you on androgens. Give me a chance.